remote tropical islands of the British Indian Ocean Territory swarm with seabirds. These are the only strips of dry land in thousands of kilometres and are vital nesting habitat. Many of the islands are completely quiet though. There is no sign of bird life in the trees or in the air. Where have the birds gone? A closer look at the islands is revealing. So if we go back 500 years in the Chagos archipelago, uh, man hadn't arrived here and all of these islands would have been uh, native, uh, native tree, native forest. What's happened uh, over the last couple of hundred years is that man has cut down the native hardwood forests and, and planted um, coconuts for a crop. And as you have a look around here now, what you can see is, is what we've loosely termed as coconut chaos. You have a closed canopy above, uh, letting very little light through down to the floor of the forest and underneath is pure coconut fronds and coconut seeds growing through. So this is a monoculture stand with very little biodiversity uh, at all associated with it. Seabirds find it very difficult to roost and build nests on the unstable fronds of coconut palms. Whereas in the native hardwood trees, they find perfect nesting habitat in amongst the sturdy branches. Coconut palms are important to hold the shorelines together and this is where they usually occur. Their seeds float across the ocean and wash up on the beach where they germinate. But it is not normal for them to grow throughout the interior. If the birds are to return in great numbers, they need hardwood trees inland in order to make their nests and roost safely. But this is not the only thing keeping the birds away. Man has introduced rats to many of these islands as well. Someone landed on the island today to um, basically do a reconnaissance, check the island for um, the vegetation types we've got here, and the size of the island for a start. Yeah, reasonable number of rats here, I'd say. Yeah, and we've found. A few coconut um, with, uh, with very nice little neat holes with, with the obvious rat marks on them, so this, yeah, the rats are definitely here. And there's no birds nesting? Um, there's probably a few. Um, there's a, there are a few Madagascan photies here, but not many, not anywhere near as many as you'd expect on an island like this. Um, and seabird numbers should be quite a bit higher than this. Um, there's a few uh, noddies and uh, white terns, but should be a lot more than this. Yeah. Rats harass nesting seabirds, eating eggs, killing chicks. Not only for the ground nesting species, but those in the trees as well. As a result, most islands with rats on them have been abandoned by seabirds. It is the combination of these two human introductions, rats and coconut monocultures, that have made about half of the islands in Chagos unsuitable for bird nesting. Fortunately, neither of these problems are irreversible. For several years now, a forest rehabilitation pilot project has been on in three different locations. The first location is shown shortly after it was started. This is a Takamaka sapling that we placed in. Looks as though the crabs have been at the bottom of that burrowing. As you can see, if you look around, we've clear felled the coconut plantation. And there's two things that we're doing on the plant inside. We're actually bringing saplings in and planting them up as we did at the northern site. And of course, we're bringing seeds from elsewhere around the island and literally just throwing them around and letting them naturally recolonize. Now that site was shown shortly after the initial clearance of coconuts. The second site still needs management, but is already showing promising signs of native regrowth. So how long have you been at this site? For the last, um, just over two years. 
but you know the benefits are coming through you know here we have these barantonias sprouting quite nicely you see in some of the other areas the native herbs are coming back to uh, give ground cover and again once the native herbs are here that stops the pipturas growing up through it inhibits their growth it blocks off the light for them and again active management these are coconut seeds that have been collected from under the old trees themselves but as you can see they're really resilient nuts really resilient nuts and even though we pulled them thrown them um, they're still they're still clinging on and they'll root again but again that's part of the uh, the active management that we have to do as time goes on less and less oversight is needed and after another year or so the real results of such efforts becomes apparent if you're looking forward there that's quite a wonderful view of of how the uh the rehabilitation of this area is going you've got naturally occurring marindas there you can see some big takamakas and barantonias coming through uh, and if we have a look there's some there's a, a really lovely small glade of incia that we planted that's now maturing and can be left alone this understory is, is um, a mixture of three or four native herbs and again, the, 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 the good part about this is this is bringing back some of, the, uh, some of the native insects onto the flowering plants, butterflies as well. Beneath the monoculture canopy of coconut plantations, other native plants like these will not grow. This is the full biodiversity of the island vegetation coming back. And this is three years growth, so that literally was a seed about that big planted. And there we are in this sunshine with lots of rain. It's just great growing conditions for them, given the chance. When these trees re-establish themselves and grow old, spreading their limbs wide over the ground, seabirds can return in great number. Tens of thousands of birds can be present in a couple of acres of native hardwood forest. The deathly quiet of coconut groves is in stark contrast. These rehabilitation sites are already on the way to providing what is needed to bring these birds back. See that? If you see here, um, this is a rat run. Rats uh, have done a huge amount of damage all over uh, oceanic islands throughout the world. Um, and there's, there's still a problem of Diego Garcia. As far as the reforestation goes, um, the main problem that they that they give us here is that they eat the seeds of plants so they stop rejuvenation and as I say incia is a very small seed it looks like a sycamore seed um, and the rats just chew every one of them that drops down that's why there's so much well there's so little regrowth of that species on the island alongside the effort to re-establish the biodiversity of the plants here it's equally important to remove the rats that have been introduced. A pilot project has been trialled on the small island of Vache Marie. In August 2014, a team placed bait feeding stations around and dispersed free bait in a meticulous pattern to ensure any rats on the island would be certain to come across it. Other projects like this have been successful around the world but it is important to see that the technique works in this environment before scaling up across the island. So this is Vash Marine and the idea of the projects on this island is twofold. The majority of what we want to do here is rat eradication. It's a small island, it's only about 15 hectares, uh, but it's got rats and that's why if you listen around you here, you can hear some fodies, but there's no seabirds breeding on this island or I've just done a census and we found two pairs of common noddy and one common white tern. On an island this size with no rats on, as you've seen elsewhere around the Chagos, there should be a couple of thousand seabirds or there could potentially be a couple of thousand seabirds here. This island is in the strict nature reserve half of the Peros Banos Atoll and it's situated next to six important bird areas. So what we're hoping is if we eradicate the rats here, um, birds from the other important bird areas will pile onto this island to breed. In a test survey in early 2015, six months after the baiting, no rats were detected on Vash Marine. 
but it will only be in August of 2016, after a two-year wait, that the island will be confirmed as rat-free. When rats are successfully removed, the results are spectacular. Um, eradicating rats, you get an increase in, um, in insects, um, uh, plant life, because the seedlings and the seeds will come away. Um, and with a bit of uh, plant management, you'll get, definitely get an increase in, um, in diversity in, in seedlings. <laughs> major, major change. So pilot projects have been conducted on two islands in Chagos, testing out forest rehabilitation and rat removal. The idea now is to expand these efforts throughout the territory. Before this can be done, more information is needed though. Experts need to look over the islands to see what is required to most effectively improve the terrestrial habitats there. An expedition is planned in August 2016 to achieve this. The Chagos Atoll Restoration Expedition will consist of plant, bird and habitat specialists. Together they will survey the archipelago to see how best to revive native vegetation, remove rats and bring the seabirds back to all the islands of the Chagos.